Hello and welcome to Rally Headquarters here in Harrogate on the fourth and final day of this year's Lombard RAC. Well, Kankinen just cruised through those closing stages under no real pressure to become the first man in the history of the sport to win three World Championship titles. And Carlos, who came so close to repeating last year's victory, well, he will surely come again. As for British fans, well, they were promised a great deal on the first two days, but uh, that last British win back in 76 seems just to get further and further away. Today, the cars went north into the North Yorkshire Hills, four special stages, 43 stage miles. We pick up the action on stage 34 in Dolby with Alan Douglas. Clear, dry weather provided a welcome change in conditions on the classic Yorkshire stage Dolby as Ewa Kankinen made his way to the World Championship title. After the carnage of the day before, he had a clear run to the finish with nothing to cause concern. He began the day with a three-minute lead over his nearest rival, Kenneth Erickson, but more important, six minutes in hand over the reigning champion, Carlos Sainz, the only man who could stop him taking the title. And as if to confirm his position, he clocked fastest time on the final stage, two seconds faster than Sainz. He had an insurance policy in the form of Lancia teammate Frenchman Didier Oriol. He'd been leading the night before but crashed on the final Kielder stage, losing any chance of a top 10 place. So on team orders, he checked in at the time control early to move up the field to accompany Kankinen and help out if he had trouble. But even then, he set fastest times on three of the final day's four stages. A repeat performance for 35-year-old Swede Kenneth Eriksson in runner-up position for the second consecutive year. He was one of the few to have a successful run through the Kielder complex. We should have had more stages there, he said. Maybe I would have won. In the Toyota, Carlos Sainz had had a difficult third day with a series of problems. The final day was spent ensuring a finish with a car that wasn't giving the full 100%. but disappointment to lose his world title after a year of success. Timo Salonen, heading for fourth place, completed the final leg at a steady pace, but even he was still occasionally caught out by the slippery conditions. Let's look at it again from the driver's seat. Fifth in the remaining Subaru legacy, Ari Vatanen picked up a few mementos of the Yorkshire stages. He said he'd spent most of the rally getting to know the new car. Frenchman Francois Delacour had his share of problems, including a brush with the North Yorkshire police. But that didn't prevent him securing sixth place on the final day. Veteran Hanu Mikola has won the event four times. He was seventh in the Mazda in spite of an engine misfire. And a stunning performance by Scott Louise Aiken Walker, top British driver at number 10. It's her best result in the RAC and the first woman to get a top 10 place since Michel Mouton in 1982. And an even more remarkable result for 23-year-old fellow Scott Robbie Head, just outside the top 10 in a showroom class Group N Cosworth. He'd prepared the car himself and finished the rally ahead of the Group N world champion, Belgian Grégoire de Mevius. Dave Metcalf once again got amazing results from his two-wheel drive Nova GTE. 14th overall and first in class. And hard work for co-driver Ian Grindrop. Easy right. 120. Easy right, water inside. Into flat press 70. Flat press 120. Here in Dolby Forest in North Yorkshire, the weather changes as quickly as the mechanics change wheels. This mist is coming down really fast. Now, for the last three days, the cars have been separated by seconds, but now they're all spread out. And with just three stages to go, there's a fairly relaxed feeling among the drivers. 
You look a lot brighter than you did last night in the middle of Kielder. Oh, it was the long road section on the way to Harrogate. I think, you know, it's, it's quite tiring going at 70 miles an hour. <laughs> so what are you going to do on these last three stages? Drive to finish, I think. It's uh, the tactics. There's too many minutes in front for the first for the, the next person and we're quite safe behind so we'll just drive to finish. What do you think of this uh, this morning's rally? No, this is a nice state sis. Three more to go and I must go very fast because I think so water and he tried to pass me. Yes, most of the cars are fairly well separated in the top ten, but Ari Vattenen's only a yeah. few seconds behind you. Yeah, yeah, that's my problem for me. Yeah. <laughs> so you and Ari are going to give us the race of the morning? Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> How are you this morning? Oh, I'm all right, thank you. We, I was hoping that probably we could catch Timo today. Maybe yes, maybe no, but uh, anyhow the steering pump failed again. Maybe it had dirt from a previous uh, broken pump, so... That was not to be, but anyway, I don't have a world championship at stake, so it's not so serious. <laughs> you're getting the star oh, treatment well. here, Richard. Well, that's right, the thing is, I've got to drive to match it now. But you're driving very well, aren't you? That's right, we're up to 17th place now. Um, I think one of the cars in front of us has just had a problem in the stage, so maybe another place yet. So everything's gone according to plan? Yep, no problems at all this morning. In fact, 20-year-old Richard, runner-up in the Shell Rally Scholarship, was 16th from a start number of 59. The top Czech driver, Pavel Sabira, 20th overall, giving the Skoda its 18th class win in 19 years. Richard Studley's Peugeot car 112 began life as a reps car. In our rally preview programme, he said he would finish in the top 50. He was right, 47th overall. Richard Moore had all his spares, tyres and wheels stolen the night before the rally. With equipment donated by motor clubs, he almost made it to the finish. His engine blew three stages from the end. The youngest driver, Radio Times Rally Quest winner Francine Bogg, started last and finished 68th. The all-woman crew of Penny Mallory and Sue Mead took equality a stage further, supported by a team of female mechanics. And Rudy Lancaster, in his first international rally, won the Newcomer's Prize. But it wasn't his first honour. He's a former Mr. Willacombe Bay of 1985. <laughs> Congratulations. Fantastic. World champion and winner of the Lombard RAC. Thank you. It's, I don't still know. The feeling is a little bit like that, but I think it will be better after. But fantastic feeling. How hard has this rally been? It has been hard enough, let's say, and we have had every different kind of conditions except snow this time, but difficult and hard and long enough. And how does it compare with all the other rallies of the world this year? This, this is one of the hardest. And so this year's champion receives his honours. This man has won so many trophies in his 13 years in top-class rallying. This is his 14th championship victory, his third world championship title in six years which says something about his domination of the sport. Greatly aided, of course, by the reliability of the Lanciers. They just seem to keep on going, and all around them are breaking down. So you're pretty new to this rallying game, Richard? That's right. Last year, I, uh, I went along with my sister's boyfriend to a, a first-time racing rally competition, just for a bit of fun. She had seen the advert in Rally Car magazine. We went along for a laugh, and we ended up winning it completely outright. And I've never even sat in a rally car before. And you've had a fairly eventful career that, since then? That's right. Uh, we've put all our money into our own Peugeot 309 GTI. We've run on the Peugeot series, but we have had our fair proportion of mishaps. But now, um, with Clive Jenkins and he's narrowing me down a bit and we're keeping the car on the road. And why have you got your car painted pink? Well, it's just that there was a bit of pink in the workshop at the time. We liked it and uh, it went on the seats, the roll cage, the helmets and uh, it's a bit of our trademark now. People, people, see, uh, people see us coming. Now there are over 160 entries, where will you finish? Uh, well we've had a very good seeding at 112, uh, we're, we're confident we're going for a, a top 50 finish. <laughs> <laughs>